So this is Fizz 2320 Computing 2, and this is the second unit on strings. And the focus of this unit is going to be talking about outputting data um, as a string. So ways in which we can uh, format uh, values from variables and uh, put them into strings so that we can print them or save them to a file. So the first part of this unit is going to look at the uh, kind of core functions for producing strings. So the print function uh, and then the uh, str, the string function, and also another one which we've not met previously um, explicitly, which is the representation function or repra. So these are um, all functions which are used to go and either output uh, values to the console or to convert values into strings. So let's start by reviewing the print function. So this, of course, is one that is normally uh, introduced in about lesson one of any programming course. Um, and um, thus far, it's mainly been used just to go and uh, output variables or values to um, the uh, Jupyter Notebook or to a console. So um, before we get going, we're going to define some variables um, of different types uh, in order to go and show how we use these various functions to convert them to strings. So I've just defined um, integers, floating point numbers, strings, a Boolean variable there, a list, and also a dictionary. So the default behavior when you use print is simply to convert all of its arguments into strings and then display them um, separated by spaces and to stick a new line at the end. Um, and so um, two, two print statements like this simply go and concatenate all the uh, arguments together, uh, joining them up with spaces and printing them out. Um, and of course, sometimes if you've got a limited display, then you'll, you'll end up wrapping a long line uh, onto several lines. But in fact, that, that second print statement is all one line um, just wrapped for display. So as I said, by default, um, you get a space between each item and you get the new line at the end. But in fact, you can go and control that. Um, so print takes uh, several keyword parameters. And amongst them, there's a, a SEP, S-E-P, and an end keyword parameter, which you can use to go and control uh, what is used to separate the, the values print out. So in this case example here, I've um, gone and uh, had a um, separation of a colon. And by setting an empty string for the end parameter, I'm going to suppress that new line character that would otherwise be printed. And so now when I do two print statements, the second print statement is going to follow on immediately after the, the first print statement. And so here you can see that they, that second printout um, just goes at the end of the line because I've not I've told the, the first print statement not to print a new line character at the, the end of the print statement. When you uh, call the, the print statement, each of the arguments you, you send to it are converted to strings first. Um, and then there's actually a couple of different routines of the functions that are used to go and do that conversion uh, from a, a value. So I mean, in this case, for example, the integer and the floating point variables intrinsically are storing numbers. And so when we print them, we have to convert that into a string. Um, and so, as I say, there are two there are two functions that Python uses in different circumstances in order to do that conversion from a variable value, which might not be a string, into something that is a string that can be therefore displayed. So the first of all, first one you've, you've come across in first year programming courses is the str function, and this is doing what we call casting. So casting generally in programming means um, converting from one data type to a different data type. And so the str function is used to cast anything it can into a string. And what we actually mean by that is that it is trying to find the best way to go and display the value of whatever it's been given as a string. So for example, if we do that with an integer, then the best way to display a value, uh, the, the integer value as a string is simply to go and give you the, the number as a decimal uh, number, um, obviously converting it into, into decimal digits and just making that the string. Um, likewise, for a floating point number, 
the uh, best way of converting a floating point number to a string is to uh, simply give it you the, the decimal digits as the, the decimal uh, representation of it. If you have a list of values, then by default, um, what the casting to string is going to do is it's going to give you a um, uh, that, that value, that list, um, as something which looks a bit like how you define it as a constant value. If you were assigning it to a variable, then it, it would look a bit like um, uh, what you get by casting it back to a string. There's then another way that Python can use to go and um, convert or produce a string from some other data type. And that's called the representation of the object. Now, in contrast to casting it to a string, the str function, what representation is trying to do is to find the best way of representing not just the value you've got, but also the type of value it is um, as a string. Um, so in many, many cases, that's going to be exactly the same as um, uh, if you just go and cast it to a string. So, for example, the representation of an integer is exactly the same as casting it to a string, because the best way to represent an integer, both the value and its type, is to just give you um, the digits with no decimal point on it, thereby indicating that it's an integer as well as what value it is. Likewise, if you ask for the representation of a floating point number, the best way to give you that representation that shows you both that it's a floating point number and what its value is, is to simply give you the digits with the decimal place in, in it to show you that it's a floating point number. But one example of where uh, string and representation give you different answers is when you look at a numpy array. So if we import numpy and simply create a, a simple array variable, which is going to be um, the number zero to nine. If we ask for that as a string, if we cast it to a string, what we get as a result is the digits separated by spaces and uh, enclosed by square brackets. And if you look um, like, you can think of this as saying, well, that's a bit like what you do if you wrote it down as a vector in maths. You might write down um, the, the, the um, the vector is just as the, 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 the individual components. Um, whereas on the other hand, if we ask for a representation, then we're asking it not just for the value, but also for an indication of what data type it is. And so when we ask for the representation of the array, it gives us the value, again, the digits zero to nine, but also it gives you an indication that this is an array. And it does this by, um, essentially giving you something which looks like how you you define the array or one of the ways you could define the array as a constant value. So you've got a slightly different set of information from representation as you do from str, from string. Okay, so um, that's why you have this difference or that, that's where the, what this difference is doing. Um, where you actually end up using it, well, when you use print, print by default is going to use um, the string casting as the way of converting whatever values is given to, to a string. But when we are working in a Jupyter notebook, um, then uh, in a Jupyter notebook, it has a special feature that when you evaluate a cell, the last value that um, uh, appeared on, on, on the cell is then reported back to the user as the output of that cell. And when you do that, the Jupyter notebook is using the representation function. So in this case here, if I print array, I get the conversion to an STR format. Whereas if I just end the cell with array, then it returns as a function of how the Jupyter notebooks work. It returns the uh, representation of the array at the end of it. And it, as you look at more complicated data types um, in Python, then you'll find that increasingly you get a difference between what the string gives you, casting as a string, where it's just trying to give you the best um, representation of the value as text compared to what the representation gives you, which is um, trying to give you not just the value, but also the best representation of the data type as well. 